I just wanted to touch on this. This is actually a really good paper that came out of Mayo looking at the microbiota throughout the, the GI tract. And so they actually were looking at obesity because as we know now with microbiome, this is highly affected. So um, they've taken in mice and taken bacteria and um, put in an obese mouse um, into a uh, very thin mouse and that thin mouse gained weight. So we know that the, the bacteria is throughout the GI tract. So as you can see here, up at the top in the stomach, there is some bacteria there. It's not going to be as much as you look all the way down in the large intestine where there is um, over a billion bacteria in that large intestine. So we know this has a huge effect on many diseases as well as weight management. So how do you affect the microbiome? There are a variety of things. As I said, there could be, you know, stress can affect it, the diet can affect it. Patients always want to take probiotic pills, and I think that it could be an okay thing. The only challenge is that we have is it's hard to really know what probiotic is going to help you. Each person's going to be very different of what probiotic might help. I've been a guinea pig. I've taken probably at least 20 to 30 types of probiotics in the 11 years I've been at U of C, and some don't do anything. Some cause cramping, um, some cause bloating, all sorts of issues. Um, so I do like to recommend getting probiotics through real food. So if you think about eating real food that has probiotics, um, these are going to be fermented foods that will help with your own gut bacteria. And you'll get benefits from them as well. Many of these things on this list here, kefir or kefir, um, tempeh, miso, buttermilk, kimchi, kombucha, and sauerkraut are all things that are truly fermented. And so these things will help with the gut bacteria. So if you think about pickles, people think, oh, pickles, I'm going to eat pickles. That's going to give me probiotics. Well, and this is only if your pickles are truly fermented. Um, so my husband and I, we make pickles at home that are truly fermented pickles. You, the ones that you get at the store are made with vinegar, so they don't have any bacteria in there. So again, one pickle could be equal to 10 yogurts. Um, so you could ferment a lot of different things and get that gut bacteria increase, and that helps your immune system. So if you think about GI symptoms, there are a variety of things that can affect it. As you see on this slide, this is um, out of um, uh, McMaster. Um, there's a variety of things that can cause that cascade of effects with GI symptoms. So on the upper left, you'll see the infection, um, microbial agents, food antigens, so it could be gluten, it could be various foods, and then stress. So as you see, it has this cascade of effect and can, can change your motility, change your absorption, and really affect your nervous system. And so patients will have all sorts of symptom, symptoms, and as, especially in not even maybe having food. So again, stress, all these things can affect what we call the brain-gut axis. And this is uh, highly, uh, there's lots of papers on this, there's books written about the brain-gut axis, but this is something I do like to uh, explain to my patients a lot of times too if they are under stress and so that you know there's a variety of things that can affect. This is a very busy slide but this is something taken from uh, Peter Gibson who is an excellent researcher um, out of Australia and so we'll talk a little bit about some of the stuff that he's doing with FODMAPs but what I liked is that he did this review um, and they looked at various things, and they did complain in the paper saying there aren't enough nutrition studies. We need to do some more studies on nutrition and see what is going to affect these patients. So they looked at four different things, and they branched it off. So they're looking at the nutritional status of that patient initially. Um, looking to see um, what's going to influence their disease activity. So what, what kind of disease do they have? What kind of symptoms are they having? Are they having fat malabsorption, um, kidney stones, different things such as that? And then what can help to prevent um, in the future, whether it's the diet, breastfeeding, things like that. So I thought this was a nice slide to uh, show what things they're working on.